Hi everyone, this is Jay Harris coming to you from Tom's Trading Room. I intend to do a two-part video set on something that Chief Architect and creator of the software John Broussard has released and made available to everybody that's a subscriber to Tom's Option Tools. And that's a new item called Strategy Insider. What you're going to do is hover over Searchers, hover over Multi-Strategies, and then left-click on Strategy Insider. Now what the Strategy Insider is designed to do is to accomplish a couple of things. First, it's going to search for an unusually high amount of options activity for the day, an unusually high amount of options activity compared to its open interest. Now, a lot of financial news networks will have people come on and they'll have a segment where they look for a high volume activity on specific options and they'll make a reference that, you know, here's a high net worth trader or here's a big money trader uh, taking a bet on XYZ stock and the specific option. And that's pretty much where they're going to leave that. They, they point out the high options activity on a particular stock and then they'll reference that there's a big bet or some big money being moved on that. But what specifically is the bet? Where are they moving on this particular option or are they setting up a couple of different option strikes to create a spread option? That's what the intelligence algorithm that's in the tools tries to accomplish. And that's what John calls this algorithm that he created, the intelligence algorithm. We're looking for uh, unusually high options activity for the day compared to its open interest. And when the algorithm runs, and that's not the only thing of the algorithm. I mean, we can't give you all those details, but the intelligence algorithm does match up where there's an unusually high amount of options activity on more than one option strike. And if there's the same or similar options activity going on on one particular stock over a couple of different strikes, it matches those up and says this might possibly be the spread trade or a spread type trade that this high net worth trader is trying to move. So let's get into it, shall we? I went to, again, Searchers, Multi-Strategies, and Strategy Insider. And here we are at the Strategy Insider page. Now, it's not best to run this strategy insider in the first hour or two. You're not going to find a lot of high or unusually high options activity compared to its open interest in the first hour or so. It's probably best to do this the last hour or two or even after the markets are closed. Now, when we say it takes the unusually high options volume and it matches up strikes and spits out a strategy where this high net worth trader could be, we want to emphasize could. It's not a 100% guarantee that that's the exact strategy being uh, traded. But because we're matching up the options activity on more than one strike, the intelligence algorithm is making its best guess or it's you know assessing what could be the strategy being employed. So again, don't take this as the actual strategy, but it's a good likelihood is what we're saying. It, it, it's our best guess at what the strategy being employed is. So if you like the idea and you like the idea that this could be where some big money is moving uh, their money into or what they're trading, and if you're thinking it's good enough for you, well, then maybe we can piggyback on that as well. That's the idea behind the Strategy Insider, sniffing out not only where the high volume is, but what potential or possible strategies are being employed there. So what we've done is we brought up the page. We're going to leave all of the controls like they are here. You're going to notice that on the strategies to trade, we have four selected. John's backtesting and research has found that the straddles and strangles on this type of setup or with this process don't find the best candidates. So we're going to leave the other four selected and look for strategy ideas that may be out there with these types of setups. Over on the stock list, if it doesn't say weekly stock list, left click on that, find that in your drop down window, left click on it and populate the weekly stock list name in the stock lists area and then click on search. Again, leaving everything else the same. Search it is. Now here we are in the first hour or two of the day and we're probably not going to see that great of results. And in fact, look down here we have Microsoft and the volume, you know, it, it's relatively large compared to its open interest, but that's really not the type of big time size that we'd like to see. So as stated, we want to do this in the last hour or two or at the close of markets. 
So one that we found was on March 5th. So to change the date, go back up to the date box here. Left click on the calendar icon. Select the month March. March 5th. We'll leave it on 2019. March 5th. And you'll know when it updates the back tested date to what you selected by the line item in red here. Back test date updated to March 5th of 2019. So here we have the weekly stock list. We can then go ahead and click search. We know which one we're looking for, so I could have just typed in the stock symbol over here, but we'll run this and we'll show you what we're talking about here. Okay, Amazon, C-Trip, 3M. Look at this here on 3M. 1,400 plus contracts on each of these two strikes here for this put credit spread compared to its open interest. So let's go ahead and click on one of the two strike hyperlinks to bring up the put credit spread on 3M. So here you see it, 3M, we're looking again at the open interest uh, compared to its volume, 1400 plus on each of these two legs compared to the really meager open interest prior to today's or that day's volume activity. So it doesn't necessarily mean that this is the strategy, but it's a pretty good probability or it's good enough in our uh, world in that we see these two strikes matched up with unusually high options volume compared to the open interest and we're going to go forward with this. Now it's assessing over one contract but we're going to type in on this example 1400. We're not going to worry about the odd lots like the seven contracts, the 50 contracts or or 107 or whatever. We're going to go round it off. Let's do the 1400 contracts. We're looking at 1,400 contracts on each here. Whoop, not 11,400, 1,400 on each. And then we're going to go back up and we're going to left click on risk graph. Now, when the risk graph comes back up, it's the same strategy, but look at the type of size we're talking about. A max risk of $1.15 million to make $247,000. So the max profit capabilities here is 21.5%. Now you may not think you're going to get out of bed for 21.5%, but when you're moving this kind of size, 21% is a nice little chunk of change there. So here we go. We got 1,400 contracts. You can see the risk graph down below. There's the chart. There's the risk graph. This high net worth trader is needing 3M to be above 200 at expiration so that that put strike expires the 200 puts expire nobody's going to want to put it to you at 200 when they can put it to the market higher than 200. now because we have it on march 5th what we can do is we can go to options expiration or the latest date let's see the options expiration is march 29th so let's go to march 29th let's click on the date box select march 29th it will reset this now and show you what the progress of this uh, trade is at expiration. Now we're looking at a profit of about $245,000 and that's a rate of return of 21.3% which is very close to the max profit max risk. You're looking at what the stock did, where it is on the risk graph, and at expiration we're basically where we needed to be above 200. So one other point I want to make in discussing this with John, look at the OI now. It's slightly up from the 1400 contracts, but it's not lower than the 1400 contracts. That doesn't mean, or what it means is that not a lot of these options were being sold off, which gives indication to John, which then gives indication to me that this probably was, or is a very good likelihood that this was the strategy being employed. Again, not 100% guaranteed that it was, but since it was 1400 contracts and all 1400 contracts are remaining, it could mean that this position was still held open up until expiration and it was that paired uh, these paired strikes for the put credit spread that was being employed so what I've showed you now guys is with strategy insider is that you can look for unusually high options volume compared to its open interest and look to where those uh, unusually high option activities are happening on multiple strikes and then the intelligence algorithm for Strategy Insider will pair those up as a possible likely trade that's being made by a high net worth trader. Again, not a 100% guarantee, but it very likely could be. And that's what we will run our assessment on. And then if you have it set back on a date 
prior to your current date, you can either save that trade in a folder, create a folder called Strategy Insider Trades, uh, save that, and then forward it to the uh, expiration date of that trade and see how it worked out. And that can be done through backtesting. And speaking of backtesting, that's what I'm going to go into in the part two of Strategy Insider. This was part one, showing you what it is and what it's looking for. And part two, we'll go over backtesting the Strategy Insider. We'll talk to you in just a few moments. Bye for now.